Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Danny here. Today's video is a little bit different in the sense that I am going to be doing a review on a, an upcycle I did, well, a furniture transformation, uh, which was actually a plastic, the plastic brown wicker outdoor lounge that I did. I had the brilliant idea of doing it with tile paint um, and I did that. And I just wanted to do a review on it because at the end of that video I did say that in a couple of months I would do a review and it would be getting close to about five, six months now. So it's we've used it, um, we sit on it, <laughs> uh, we have fun with it. The Actually we've got four cats and they actually jump on it, climb on it, claw on it and everything too so it has been well worn. Um, I do actually cover it up at night, but that's mainly because of the cushions because sometimes the cats will sleep on it and um, You know one of our cats is black and you know he gets black fur on it And also I don't want them to get on with their muddy claws, which they do anyway, but I tr Do try to look after it and I do try to keep it You know as good as possible and be careful with it because after all it's paint on plastic wicker and that <laughs> in the whole scheme of things is not ideal but I did it and I just want to do a review on it and let you know how it's worked out and how it's held so up. I got the idea to actually paint it with the tile paint because we had done a really budget DIYs on our kitchen and on our bathroom and most of the bathroom was paint and probably about half of that was tile paint so we used it in the shower on the floor we used it everywhere we could that we had tiles and also in the kitchen on the backsplash and the cabinets as well and I would always marvel at how well it wore and the tile paint because it was especially in the shower subject to the hot water the heat the steam um, because we have it on our walls on our floors and everything in the bathroom and I would look at it and think wow that's pretty durable so what would that be like on the wicker another reason too is because we had ultra glossy tiles and it does say to sand down the tiles and to make them as coarse as possible but I, I couldn't do it like when I tried to sand the tiles it just they were all they were just still ultra glossy and I couldn't get them to be coarse or anything and the, the tile paint stuck to that so I thought the couch being plastic shiny slippery wicker that it's made out of um, well it maybe the paint the tile paint would stick to that so that's the reason I thought about doing it with tile paint so we actually got this for free this particular outdoor lounge it was on the side of the road someone had just put it out they were moving and we picked it up for free and we'd had it a few years um, and I'm not sure if it we paid a lot for it or if we just bought it I wouldn't have done it because uh, as it was because we got it for free and because we'd had it a while if something happened and didn't work out well so be it we lost nothing really but the couch is a modular so it's four pieces um, two pieces have a front and a side one piece has a back and the other is just like the ottoman and I would say this is probably the favorite most favorite mo makeover I've ever done um, apart from the Hampton style dining table which I'm sitting at um, they're sort of on a par. I love both of them. They're both on the um, on our outdoor patio, so I do love both of them. So there were two things I thought may go wrong after I had actually painted the wicker furniture. One was that it just wouldn't stick, and that would easily come off if it was touched or if it was scratched or if it was bumped. That was the main thing. Another thing was with enamel paints I know that they can yellow and that they can weather and go off pretty much in the sun or in the heat and that was another issue I thought we may have so they were the two main things that I thought um, might be a problem after I painted it and when we started using it if you haven't seen the video on this transformation I will link it in the description below and I'll also put it up on the card if you want to see what I've done and get an idea of how I did it it was a process and I take you through the whole process as well okay so before I decided to do this update video I hadn't really looked into it I hadn't gone into it I sort of would look at it generally and think wow this is really good I never saw any little bits that were coming off or anything like that and I thought that you know there was it was all fine and generally it looks amazing 
Um, I the other day though I um, post down the patio and I thought I'd bring the furniture inside because I always got it off the patio when I host down and when I did I noticed between where the two, two of the modules were butted together that a little bit of paint had rubbed off and had come off and I think that is where the butted together when we sit on it and we use it it moves around when I clean and sweep and I pull it apart and then push it back, it sort of bumped it and it's come off in a few little places there. So that is understandable, like I can understand that where it's sort of bumped off in that area. So that would probably be the main main part where the majority has come off and if you look at it, I'll put it up on the screen now, um, it's not much, <laughs> it's just a tiny, tiny little bit there. Also underneath the cushion, just around that spot, you can see there's a tiny little bit of cracking of some of the paint. And um, it hasn't actually really come off, but it just seems to be cracking a little bit. I'm just wondering because underneath the cushions, I only put one coat of paint under there, so maybe that's why. But even then, it's not happening all underneath the cushions, so I don't know. There's different areas where maybe for some reason it's just doing that, but that's the only part there where I can see it's cracking. Saying that, it's under the cushion, I don't care. I mean, I haven't tossed up whether to paint under the cushion at all just to save paint because um, no one looks under there. The cushion covers it the whole time, but I thought I might as well paint. I'm going to this extreme, so I painted under that. There are other, there were other few little spots that I found. One was down below where, um, you know, you put your feet and I assume that maybe it could have a little bit here could have come off because someone's kicked it with their foot or their boot or something like that. Um, in saying that, that's the only part I could see that had come off down below. So maybe not. I just don't know. I just don't know. And there are just a few other little parts near there as well. Um, the arms initially were something I thought that might be a problem because that I thought might get the most wear and tear. People. Um, resting their arms on it, maybe unconsciously or subconsciously sort of picking at it with their fingernails, putting hot drinks on it and that sort of thing. And when I had a look, it was all really good. I did find a few little spots on one arm where there were some tiny little chips out of it. And yet, when I went back to have a look at it and fix it up, I had a hard time trying to find actually where those little pieces were. So that's that's how big they were like they were sort of pretty much insignificant I mean with anything you're going to get um, wear and tear and especially anything that's painted you're going to get it chipping and marking that sort of thing so generally that that's fine like I said before too we have four cats and I know they play around around it they jump on it they probably even claw at it when I'm not looking to be honest with you so um, could be from that and I mean if that's the case well that's understandable and yeah just going around it might might have been just a few little bits that had come off in places and I mean tiny little bits nothing significant um, so pleased so pleased percentage wise I guess if you would say that there is any damage you'd be looking at probably 0.0001% out of the whole couch so um, you know in that regard it's been a complete success and I absolutely love it okay well the other problem that I thought there might be is yellowing and I thought um, it may not be a problem because we have the couch under cover it's on our patio so it's not actually in the Sun although we do get Sun of a morning that will come that will hit the back of the couch um, and it gets quite hot in summer too so there's quite a bit of heat um, on it but that's been fine as well like it stayed a beautiful white crisp clean color and there have been there's been no yellowing or anything like that I guess when you think about it too we've got the same paint in the shower that gets really hot water on it so yeah that's fine it you know maybe the way it's made it's to um, counteract that so it doesn't actually yellow there were a few parts that I thought paint had come off <laughs> and um, originally like and I'm thinking oh no <laughs> it started coming off but there were actually just little bits of dirt on there anyway and um, 
they just sort of rubbed off and wiped off so that's another thing it's easy to wipe and clean you just wipe over it and and it's all fine so with the little pieces that have come off I thought that I would touch them up with some paint that I, I had left over um, I think I used probably about one whole tin maybe of tile paint I had half a tin that I had to buy another tin because I didn't have enough and then yeah so I probably had almost half a tin left over so what I did was I put it into a little screw top jar so I have easy access to it so I can just touch it up whenever I need to I got a craft brush just a little craft brush and I just dipped it in the paint and spot painted it where the little bits have come off I didn't worry about the primer because I did use primer originally but I'm not worrying about the primer for those little bits it's not going to make any difference so I did that for all of the little bits that I could see which weren't many at all it wasn't it was hardly anything really and um, yeah that's covered it up so you don't even notice those little bits in the future I guess there may be more chips that come out and a bit more wear and tear but I can just patch it up like that and it's honestly takes a couple of minutes to get the paint out and dab it in those little spots. I'm a member of a few Bunnings pages on Facebook and I posted the transformation in that and I got so many likes and comments and people asking questions about it and actually wanting an update on it in the future because I think even people maybe who watch the video would be skeptical of how well it would have turned out as was I, <laughs> uh, I just wasn't sure. But um, like I said, it's one of my favorite transformations I've done and it's made such a huge difference to the patio. Before it was like a big brown blob <laughs> and now it's just, just nice and white and crisp and it just, it looks really lovely. So it was a success. I absolutely love it. And if I got another wicker lounge or a wicker chair that needed a makeover, um, I would do it again. It was a process, it took me about three weeks and I suppose a con of it is that it was a very smelly paint and um, I just, by the end of it honestly I had had enough. I thought I'm never going to do this again and okay. I can say it has worked out and I'm really really pleased with it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in next week's video. Bye for now.